So for the past few years now, there's been a trend of YouTube videos that are like, how fast can you touch grass in X game? Me, being a connoisseur of grass myself, I spent a lot of time in it, guys. I always find these videos a fun little way to explore games in ways that you didn't think of before. And about a year ago, there were a lot of Kingdom Hearts themed ones that were being posted. And you know, those videos are fine and all, but... I don't want to touch grass. Why would I want to touch that gr green sh Look at that. Oh! I've spent too much time on this planet walking around, playing outside. I no longer want to be a functional member of society. Who do you think I am? The, the, the fucking Lorax or some shit? I just want to stay inside and avoid the smell of petrichor. That's the smell of wet grass, by the way. If you didn't know, I'm a smart guy. So I'm going to be playing Kingdom Hearts for you guys today. But if I touch grass, I quit. I quit! This was a fun little experiment. I've been playing the Kingdom Hearts games again. This was an opportunity to kind of mess around in them. And to my surprise, and probably yours too, you can actually get pretty far in these games without touching any grass. So yeah, let's get on with our POSA prevention. I am, I am such a smart cookie. But I've done that like 13 times and it's giving me a headache. Before we get into that, a few rules. One, non-interactive elements like transitions and cutscenes don't count. If I'm not directly in control, it doesn't count. Two, no mods, no cheats. We're playing it as you would play normally. And three, no timer. Not really the point of this video. Just wanted to have some fun and explore the game a little bit. I will have an approximate time of how long it takes to touch grass in the game, though. Just so you know which game you should and should not play. We're doing important information in this video. Also, Jordis and Nathaniel Bandy were inspirations for this video, too. Shout out to them. So, yeah. Let's go. Let's see if this works. <laughs> it did not. Let's start off where all good stories start. A third of the way through with Kingdom Hearts 1. After watching the intro again for probably like the millionth time, playing one second to avoid a copyright strike, we are greeted with the tutorial section and dive into the heart. And I'd say we're off to a pretty good start for the challenge so far. No grass in sight, just glass. One letter off. Choosing which thing we want to prioritize throughout the game, I naturally choose the sword or strength because... I'm a buff boy. And yes, I know that's not the best choice to get the best abilities throughout the game, but... I, um, <laughs> We get through the tutorial pretty easy with Mickey shouting in our ear the whole time. That's Mickey, by the way, uh, that disembodied voice that you see there. The only thing that comes close to grass is that vine thing on the glass there, but again, it's glass, so it doesn't count. We then make it to Destiny Islands, where we get on our mission to collect the items in- uh, Alright, so throughout the course of making this video, I had to ask myself a question that I never thought I'd have to ask myself several times. What is grass? Because that's a green texture right there. That is implying grass, kinda. But is it grass? It's on the sand, so it could be more considered moss, I guess? And you know, there's trees around there too. You know, do trees count as grass? You know, they're plants. And for the other Kingdom Hearts videos showing grass as fast as possible, they just go to that green part. But this green thing in the middle, does that count? Well, after some thoughtful and deep research, and, you know, also just thinking about it for a second. That's probably not grass. Probably just kind of a moss thing that's collected on the sand, like, over time. But just for the sake of the challenge, and just to make it a little bit more fun, I'm going to be avoiding the dark green spots. Also trees, they don't count. At least the wood part. Everybody got that? Good. Let's go. First day on Destiny Islands is pretty simple. Just going around collecting items that we need to build the raft. The raft. Since the walkways are pretty wide and there's several ways to get around the island, this is pretty much a breeze. We're climbing on the wood here, but again, we're touching grass, not plants in general. This challenge would be pretty stupid if otherwise. The only sore spot is possibly when you're trying to get the log from Riku, and people like to jump on top of the hut there. But again, we ain't touching grass here, so we're just gonna go through the other way. Items collected, day's done, watching the cutscene, them laying on the trees, Having fun. Do 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 dee 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 Yeah! Look at Goofy laying in the grass right there. Look at him. He's taunting. Start our second day off right. I don't know how Sora jumps like that. Now we gotta get some food for our adventure. Getting into the first cave is a little bit tricky though. You gotta have to maneuver around some of that green stuff a little bit. As I make my way to the other side of the island, I realize this is where our journey with this game comes to an end. We need the water bottle from Kairi to get the water. The only way to get the water bottle from Kairi is to complete the Riku race. The only way to complete the Riku race is to touch the star on that platform. And the only way you can touch the star on that platform is if you touch the grass on it too. I thought about going the other way through the trees, but uh, yeah, you gotta step on grass doing that too. And even then, there's not enough momentum and Sora's jump in this game to get you to touch the star, go over to that cave. So our journey with this game comes to an unfortunate short end. And I like this game too. I was looking forward to playing a little bit more, but... Alright, what's the next game? Oh, fucking bullshit. Chain of Memories! The best game in, yeah, Chain of Memories is probably one of my least favorite Kingdom Hearts games. That's the dichotomy with this game. You either love it to death 
or you fucking hate it with your guts. The card system, I just, I just, just can't get on board with it. This was the game I was least looking forward to playing, but we gotta do it anyway. I will only be doing Reach Anime Memories because one, looks better, two, easier to record, and three, is basically the same thing anyways. Also, I will be throwing my chair in frustration a little bit less. Let's go. Baby. After the opening cutscene introducing us to the world of Castle Oblivion, we are then thrust into the card system. Get through the long as hell tutorial. Why is the tutorial so long? It, he just keeps on yapping. We're then let loose in the Traverse Town, where the only grass that's present here is around some of the light poles, so as long as we just avoid them, we're good. Once we get through our card slinging, backstabbing, box throwing shenanigans, we get to the world boss, we beat its ass, five asses I guess, get through the axle boss fight, got it memorized, I got it memorized sir, yes I do. We're then free to choose which world we go to next, and because of that, we can get pretty far in this game. Agrabah and Olympus are just sand worlds, Monstro is just an animal, so of course no grass there either, and Halloween Town, you can kind of technically count some of that as grass, but for the actual playable parts, you're just on stone. You can get pretty far in this game, really, do I have to play the whole thing, man? Do I really have to play it? Fuck. I went in the order of Olympus, Agrabah, Monstro, and Halloween Town. It took me about two hours to get through those worlds. I will say, playing through this game for this video again, I like this game just a little, just, uh, just a little bit more, just a little bit, kinda. I don't know what it is about it that's making me like it a little bit more, but I'm having a little bit more positive feelings towards it. Maybe it's just because I spent a little bit more time organizing my deck, but still, I find the card system annoying. Also, the bosses in this game, annoying as hell, especially freaking Oogie Boogie. Fuck that boss, oh my god. Anyways, we get through those first four worlds, then we get to Wonderland, which is where our grass-free adventures in this game come to an end. In the first room of this game, there is a door that is covered by some vines. The only way to break them is to break the corresponding vines on top of this platform, which is covered in grass. No way to get around this either. Can't really do it from jumping height because it's too far deep in the platform. You gotta touch the grass. So, let's just get the inevitable out of the way. Yes! Yes! I did it! Finally! I can do it! I can finally kill my- Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're done with that. What's the next game? Yo! Yeah! Right, Kingdom Hearts 2! Yes! 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 It's the GOAT! Bah! Bah! We are playing the best game ever made! I cannot wait! Let's fucking go! Um... I may have overreacted just a little bit. Finally, we get to my favorite game of all time, Kingdom Hearts 2. We're gonna have some fun time playing this. I cannot wait to get into it. We get another blessed intro for us. Another second of the footage to prevent from getting copy struck. <laughs> and you and I, there's a new land. After that, we get introduced to the big goat of them all, Roxas. He's my favorite character in all media, like period, in case you didn't know. Oh yeah, we're gonna go to Roxas City today. That's a real place, Roxas City. I always put dirty words wherever they put the blanks in the speech there. Did you do that too? All our ball. Gone? Huh? You can't say dick. Why not? First day in Twilight Town is just simple tutorials. Walk up, lock on. That's all you really gotta do. No grass to be seen here, folks. Ah, uh, yes, I'm so happy we get to play Kingdom Hearts now. We then get to our next tutorial, the battle tutorial. I didn't know what save files used to be back in the day, so I always just like played this tutorial over and over again, so I'm used to this cypher boss battle. I know it by heart. We get our equivalent to the Kingdom Hearts 1, choosing our power, and I usually go with just the middle one because that's just how... Oh, wait. Roxas has to chase the nobody, and to chase he has to go through the... No! It can't be true. It can't be You can just skip that part, right? You can just skip. <laughs> I, I didn't want to have to do this. Okay, fight the boss, fight Cypher, beat his ass. Cool. Here comes the nobody. He's coming He's coming to lead us to the mansion. Or to get to the mansion, he has to... to, to... Ah! No. No, I, I don't want to believe it. I don't, don't want to believe. It's not true. It can't be true. Okay. Here we go. Ah! No! 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 <laughs> don't talk to me right now, man. No, just don't talk to me. <laughs> I wanted to play Game Wars 2. I don't get it. All right. Now that we've gotten ripped the band-aid off, gotta go over to the next game. Now, what's the next game? Okay, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, okay, okay. I think I'm ready to move on. Kingdom Hearts three, five, eight days over two. That's how you say it. 
and it is 358, not 358. Kingdom Hearts, fun with words. I do like this game a lot, and it does feature my boy Roxas for the entire thing. So I'm happy if you're happy. We start on day 255. Slow down. Now I'm just playing. We get to see Roxas and Axel's friendship and where it's at at that point. And then we go all the way back to day seven. Okay. Getting to play Roxas a little bit for the first time. That D-pad is a little bit hard to get used to because I've been playing on the analog stick for everything else here. Using a D-pad in 3D space. Always a recipe for success. Emphasis on the suck. You eventually get used to it though. It's fine. Say hello to Organization 13, everybody. Hi, Xehanort. Hi, hi Xehanort. Hi, Xehanort. Oh, hello, hi, Xehanort. Xehanort. Hi, hi, Xehanort. No, I'm Xehanort. Hi, Xehanort. Hello, no, Xehanort. Are you Xehanort? I'm Xehanort. Xehanort. Say hello to Xion. Roxas has a monologue. First mission in Twilight Town and the train station. Not the bad part like that. We, we don't want to go there. It's easy enough, and all the rest of the missions are just tutorial missions with each member of the organization. Marluxia is a. <laughs> and Larxene is a. Can't you probably noticed that I've not mentioned grass at this point, and that's because all of this stuff takes place in Twilight Town. The beginning missions are mostly one or two rooms, and there's like things that block you off from going to other sections, so even if we wanted to explore Twilight Town, we could. There is some grass stuff in the sandlot with like the trees and stuff on the side there, but that's super easy to avoid. And even when we're in the town square, the access to the mansion is mostly blocked off. The game's like, nah, nah bro, I feel you. I'm, I'm gonna give you something from last time. That was shitty of me to do. Just don't be gooning, okay? Is there finally a game that I really like that we can actually start playing? Holy shit. We get through the tutorial missions, and I don't like how they spread these out over different days. It's kind of making the game drag a little bit, but still, we're actually playing a game this time. We gotta listen to Cyax give us our missions every time, and fuck you, Cyax. I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to listen to you and your five triangles, maybe? Getting a little bit more free reign with the missions. We get to choose which ones we get to take now, with story important ones with keys on it, and optional ones without it. I try to focus on the main story ones, so I know that we don't have to touch grass in them. And, you know, I just decided, you know what, why don't we just do one for the sake of it? Let's see what happens. I got more Lucia with me. We going around the town square. We getting heartless fucking killed, and then we get- oh. It's open now. Does that mean I have to go into it? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have chosen this mission? Oh wait, we can abort the mission. Day saved! We just skip that day and go on our merry way. Not before I fix my blocks. I, I hate the blocks in this game. I could go on a whole rant about how I hate the block system. I, not today. Because we gotta get to some Disney worlds. And in this game, you don't get to choose which worlds you go to. You're just assigned it when you get a mission. And it just so happens the first Disney world we go to is Agrabah. It's like it knows. The developers 15 years ago knew that I was going to make this challenge, and so preemptively made Agrabah the first world in this game. And yeah, hey, I appreciate it. Missions in this world are surprisingly difficult. You have to do a lot of different things to go through it, and that Pete one, oh my god, that one's stupid. You gotta stay out of his line of sight, but his line of sight is fucking huge, and you have a D-pad, so you don't have really granular control, so you, you end up getting caught a lot. Some of the puzzles in this world are a little bit annoying too. Just... Just a little bit. Get around Pete, jump on the platforms, go in the cave, beat the shit out of some enemies, and we get the first round of Agrabah stuff done. Shion has plot shit to do, so she goes off and we're just left alone. With Axel, though. He's still there. Our next Disney World is Beast Castle, and... Wait. Wait. If I'm remembering correctly... Oh, please don't let that be true. Please don't let me... Oh! What I thought. So, in order to get into Beast Castle, we can't just go through the front door. It's locked. The only way to get into Beast Castle is this crack on the side of the castle. And in order to get to that, you gotta walk through the grass. When you first see it, it doesn't look like grass because it's purple, and that's not what grass usually looks like. It's at night, and when you walk on it, it makes a grass sound. So it's grass. Got to day 73 with this, and it's much farther than I thought it was gonna be. It's not as far as Chain of Memories, but we actually got to play the game in actual Kingdom Hearts Combat. It was on a D-pad, but I'll take it at this point. Still butthurt, though over Kingdom Hearts 2. Why would you have to take my bed? Nah, but seriously, that would be so cool. Birth by Sleep. It's a cool game. This is a game I was relatively late towards because growing up, I did not have a... Uh, but playing it later on, I still love this game, so I'm pretty excited to get into it. As the intro plays here, let me talk about what I like about this game. The command deck system, which is the system that I think the cards should have been, because Chain of Memories, the cards are tied to everything, you know, including basic attack and stuff like that, not just special and items. And I think that in this game, automatically refilling your meter and tying it to special attacks and items only was a good decision. I think it's what really made this game. <laughs> it's everywhere. There's no escape. There's no escape. He can't, he can't leave. Unless he touches the crap. All right. Now let's get the inevitable done. <laughs> again? Seriously, again. Why is it with all the games that I really like, it's so short? We didn't do anything in this game without touching grass. It's it's over. It really is over before it even began. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Poor Ventus, man. 
they put through so much. We didn't even get to see Aqua. Aqua fans, they're crying in the club right now. Okay, maybe recode it. We'll give us something more to do. Not playing coded, obviously, because that's a mobile game that I don't think anyone can even play at all at this point. I mean, you can, but not really. Maybe someday. Continuing in the DS line, we got recoded. We get our second dive into the heart in DS quality. Same deals this time, sword, bite me. And it's fitting because this is an excuse to play Kingdom Hearts 1 yet again. How fun. We're popped straight into Destiny Islands yet again, and it's the same deal with this game that it was in Kingdom Hearts 1. Avoid the dark green spots. You should be good. There are some difficult spots here, like the Tidus fight here. There are some dark splotches that are around here, and of course, we get knocked back whenever we get hit, so we had to be careful to attack him when the time was right. Make sure to not get knocked back. Ugh. Fuck you, Tidus. Trying to get to the cave is a hell of a journey of itself because of these ramps here that go right into grass, and there's some dark splotches around there as well. I did do some training to make sure I was prepared when I was recording this video, and this ramp right here, goddamn, there is a green splotch right at the top right there, so I have to jump in the right spot. Ugh, it was frustrating. I got that shit down. Fuck with your boy. There's another little green spot we have to skirt our way around. And there's like this green part converging out right before the entrance of the cave. And since the D-pad is very bad with directions, we have to be very careful. Come on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, I gotta avoid that too. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. We're good. Our first boss shows up and this is actually, for this challenge, the hardest boss in the whole video. Even harder than one that's coming up. Because there is grass laden throughout this whole thing, and knockback in this game is pretty bad. Directional buttons, not that great. So any wrong move or wrong attack could lead us straight into it. First phase is all right. All you gotta do is attack his hands and then watch out for the block explosion attack that he does. There's a pattern that you eventually get for those blocks so you can avoid them. Second phase is pretty much the same, except there's more blocks this time, so we have to be a little bit more careful. That third phase though, that's where you get a little bit tricky. Because it's just blocks, electric blocks, that knock you back so far, and the only thing you can attack is in the middle. And the only way to get to the middle, when the blocks expand. And you have to be in the right spot when the blocks expand, or else you get knocked back. And there's only a specific window you can do it, and the window is random, so you just have to hope you're in the right spot that doesn't knock you back in the grass. Ooh! Do I reveal the sauce? Fuck it, I'll reveal the sauce. I use safe states for this one. I'm sorry, okay? This one was like really hard and I wanted to have a good fun video and challenge for you guys and I just wanted to get it right. <laughs> I retried this boss like, I don't know, 10 times to get it right. I just kept on getting knocked back into the fucking grass because of those fucking electric blocks. Just, <laughs> whatever, we retried a couple times and eventually we get it done. I had to cheat a little bit, but it's worth it. We go to Traverse Town yet again, and it's the same story as it was Chain of Memories. Except there's clear grass textures on the wall this time. Let's just not touch the walls. Bada bing, bada boom, we get it done. By the way, I love how many different gameplay elements are in this game. Like once you're in a side scroller and then you're in this shooter section and then you're in the spot. It's really cool. But we do not get to choose the worlds that we go to in this game. It's a linear progression. And the first world that we get outside of Traverse Town just so happens to be Wonderland. And it is grass right away. So, I'm still hurting from Kingdom Hearts 2 just a little bit. It's starting to go away just a little bit, but in flashbacks. Recoded, our journey has come to an end. I like you for what you are. People dismiss you a lot, but I still love you, okay? You're my baby. Mwah. Dream Drop Distance. DDD. After a brief tutorial boss fight, we are led into Traverse Town yet again. Same deal as this time, just avoid the poles in the center of town. We should be good. But actually not, because there's a lot more to Traverse Town this time. We'll get to that. First, we gotta get introduced to the World Ends With You characters. And the fact that this game has the World Ends With You characters, it, it, it makes this game... It, it, well, it makes this game... Goated with the sauce. And also, we have two playable characters now. We have Riku and Sora dropping at different times. So we just got to avoid grass at each one of their little things. They explore the same world, so we should be good. Right? Like I said, there's a lot more to explore with Traverse Town this time around, but there's not that much grass in there. It's just mainly buildings. There is some grass here and there, but we can just avoid that pretty easily. It's not that big of a deal. Sora is the first character that we play, and there is a drop meter there, yes, but if we're careful, we should be able to manage. So we get to get through Sora's story in Traverse Town pretty easily. We get through that monkey boss. I'm not going to say a joke after that. And we get introduced to our first three worlds. The Grid, Prankster's Paradise, and... I think that's how you say it. Naturally, we go to the grid first to avoid all the grass because that's where all the good grass avoiding people stay. Computers, it is the hardest world out of all of these. It's probably the one you should pick last to play, but we have a challenge to do, so damn it, we're gonna do it. I'll only get a little bit into it before I drop into Riku and continue his story in Traverse Town. Same deal as Sora, go through Traverse Town, avoid the grass, and then get to the monkey boss. And... Come on! 
Really? <sighs> okay, so I tried thinking of ways to fight this boss without trying to touch the grass. At first, I was like, okay, I'll just stay in the corner here and hope he comes over to fight me, and that didn't happen. I'll try to go forward and fight this boss, but then he removes the stairs, and, and I didn't dash in time, and- ah! Did I pause in time? I, th I think I did, yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm good. Well, we're in a predicament now, aren't we? If I unpause this game, we're dead. But if I drop back to Sora, who's in the grid, we should be fine. And knowing how dropping works in this game, it drops you at the exact point where you dropped initially. So if we ever go back to Riku, we would just be ending up right there again. I don't think it works the same with bosses. I'm not too sure, but I'm not risking it. So yeah, drop back to Sora. Let's continue our adventure only as him and no one else. I start grinding a little bit because I know it's a little bit of a harder world, so it takes a little bit longer for me to get through this world, but once I get to a Moogle, I bought as many drop me knots as I could get. And since that pretty much restores the entirety of your drop meter, we should be good for the rest of the game if we just have this. We then get to the Tron boss battle, and god, this thing is hard as shit if you're not prepared. I think I tried it like five times until I just said, fuck it, I need to grind, so I started grinding a little bit. I think I did it a couple more times, and eventually I got it. The next world is Prankster's Paradise, and yes, there is a lot of grass in this world, there's thankfully pathways to all of the important parts of this world. So all we have to do is just follow the pathways and then we're good. All we have to really do is be careful when we do the roller coaster thing, trying to get Pinocchio. If you jump down the wrong way, we could end up in the grass. After getting through the carnival section, we get to the water section. And this one was a little bit tricky. Because there's these little seaweed things that are sticking up in the ground there. And since they're coming out of the ground underwater, they're derivative of grass. I'm gonna count it as grass for this time. So I had to be very careful maneuvering around this world. There are enemies spawning everywhere. So if I started battling them, I could accidentally bump into the grass again. So I made sure to avoid all of the enemies in this area. Ah, stop spawning. Oh my God, stop spawning. Eventually we get to the world boss, which is probably the most annoying one in this game. I do not like his boss. Last it, oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna call it. the hunchback world is next. The world is mostly pavement and stone in this one. So pretty easy to get through and this is the lowest level of the world so since we've been grinding in the higher level ones over there this world is pretty easy to get through navigation just can be a little weird sometimes find a few dream eaters here and there get through the door and oh I guess we're done now. We didn't get pretty far on this one, and it was a lot of fun dealing with the challenges This one was probably the most interesting one out of them all. So yeah, our journey comes to an end There Good game not the best game ever, but still a good game moving on Next up is- oh wait, yeah. They took these offline, didn't they? I can't play them. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, 0.2, a fragmentary passage. In the collection, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8, Final Chapter Post! Some people might not even count this as a game, it's just a Kingdom Hearts 3 demo, but I count it. We first start our journey at- oh. Hmm. Oh, uh, um. Um, all right, this one stumped me for about a month. I could not determine whether or not that freaking texture right there was grass. Because there's clearly a open pathway, kind of like Kingdom Hearts 1 thing, where it looks like moss a little bit, but it has the texture of grass. Honestly, I was stuck on this one for quite a while. I had to phone a friend. Hello, Mr. Key, or at Key of Time 15 on YouTube. How are you doing today? I'm good. I heard you need some help. Yes, I need your help desperately. I have a question for you. Okay, yeah, ask away. So, I'm making this video about grass, alright? <gasps> You're finally touching grass? Dude, shut up. Alright. Is that grass? Because I, I I can't tell. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that that's that's grass. Fucking bullshit. I was really wanting to play this one, too. I really was. You know what, fuck it. You all heard what he said. He said that's not grass. That's what he said. Wait, that's not what I said. So we should be good. As long as we just jump on those places where there's clearly rock there, we'll be fine. Totally. There are some rocks with some grass highlights on it, but there's a path that you can take while we jump across it, and yeah, it's fine. Once we get out of that patch, there's a pretty clear path for us to get to the first fight of the game, and this one can be a little difficult. Because as we'll see in Kingdom Hearts 3, the rocking and attack speed of this game it is a lot. It throws you pretty far. So I have to put myself in a place where there's not much grass surrounding it, so I don't get either one knocked back or two, try to attack an enemy and get flung into it. Thankfully, this one does have a little pocket that you can do that in, and I'm able to get rid of the Heartless with ease. 
enemies. Aqua's already level 50 in this game, so she's pretty OP. Another battle vignette, this time with an even bigger opening with no grass, so this one's pretty easy. We then stroll our way into town where we gotta fight some clocks by Coldplay. It's pretty much the same story as Traverse Town. There's a little place where there's a tree and grass surrounding it. As long as we avoid that and some of these other like flowers and stuff that's hanging on top of the windows, Good, good. There's enemies spawning everywhere in this town, but usually for this game, I just ignore them. But there was one time I was around the poles and I did get knocked back by an enemy and I was very close to touching the grass right there. I did get through the tree a little bit there, but thankfully I was able to land. Whatever, we get the clocks by Coldplay done and we're able to cross the bridge. Or aqua trauma later, we get to the mirror section. No grass at all in this section, so we just play it like we normally would. After our platform shifting, staircase grifting, and mirror flipping duties are done, we beat mirror aqua, give her some more trauma, it just never ends in this game. We get to the next section and yeah, I can't front for this one. That's grass. I, I can't get around that, I'm sorry. There's a little bit of dirt there. It's just, it's grass. It's grass. So, last game. But after getting through all those games, we finally get to the big kahuna, Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, baby! We get to one of my other favorite games in the series. You're crucified in some parts of the internet if you say that. Another classic intro. Yes, give me more, Mr. Skrillex. We get our third Diamond to the Heart for this video, and it's looking better than ever. Oh my god, look how pretty. Unreal Engine 4 does wonders for this game. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to play this game. <laughs> what am I doing? Choose our options, beat the boss, simple as pie. Sora back to level one yet again. So we gotta get Sora back on that grind set. Sora booking flights to Florida because he going to Gainesville. The planets were edging. We arrive at Olympus to get our first taste of proper game. Oh, come on! Really? Wait, 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 wait. There's a rock right there. If I could just like jump immediately onto that rock, then... Let's go! I originally recorded this thinking that was the end right there, and that was gonna be it, but I literally didn't think to look to the left of me onto that rock. So we can actually play Kingdom Hearts 3. A little bit, if you know what I mean. Sora's jump is pretty high and far in this game, and you have the dash ability immediately when you start the game. So as long as we just jump onto the rocks and avoid the grass parts, we should be good for the most part. Jumping our way over to the introductory battle, we have to be very careful with this one because there's some little grass patches here and there that if an enemy could knock into us, especially that big boy, it could knock us into the grass. So I just selectively attack enemies when I feel the time is right, and I get through it pretty good. And also, Donald and Goofy sacrificing themselves to touch the grass literally saved my skin a couple times. So thank you, Donald and Goofy. You're actually useful. Wait, is this actually the first time we're using Donald and Goofy in this challenge? I mean, we had the cards and Chain of Memories, but that I don't know if that counts. Holy shit, this is the first time we're playing with them during this challenge. Let's go! It spawns me in the grass again. But again, jumping right out of it, we're good. Sora's walk in this game is also pretty fast too, so if we don't time our walk just right, he could dash right into the grass. But again, jumping on the rocks when we can, and being as slow as we can when necessary. We meet Hades, he throws us deeper into the city of Olympus, and the city is mostly made of stone, so we should be golden, right? Wrong! Well, we were able to make it through, but still. Wrong! There are three parts to this section that involve grass. If we do a little wrong move, we could be in trouble here. The first time we see some more grass is trying to save this woman on the pillar. There is a pathway that is blocked out for us to completely avoid the grass. Just be careful with those enemies. I smack on your bitch with the water. I fuck on your bitch with the water. Water literally saved my life. The second tricky spot was this hill right here. And of course in this game, you slide down hills. You don't just walk down hills. So you have much less fine control of where Sora goes with this. One wrong move and we could be out. But if you look at it a little closely, there is a very narrow path that we can follow to avoid all the grass. So we just got to position ourselves right before we slide down. We got it. The third one is, well, it's now it's just intimidating me at this point. Look at it. Come on. You know you want to touch the grass, Matt. Have a life. Hercules. What are you doing? Get out of that. You're, you're making me look bad. With Sora's jump and his dash, right across it. Being careful on this path and jumping before we enter here, we get to the Rock Troll. Boss is pretty easy. I did select Proud Mode for this because I know Proud Mode is basically like Standard Mode and any other Kingdom Hearts Huh? Um. What? Game. What the, what the fuck just happened? This is not a joke. This was legit happened while I was recording this. Like, it didn't close the game. It just closed the window and changed the resolution of my monitor. So the windows got messed up. This legit has never happened to me before while playing this game. Is the game trying to stop me? I ain't gonna be stopped now. I'm way too deep into this shit to be stopped now. A silly game can't do shit to me. Or maybe it knows what's coming. 
and is trying to prevent me from doing it. And in that case, I appreciate your concern, but we got to finish this, man. We're too deep in now. Beat the rock troll, see Meg. And yeah, I knew it was coming. The game knew it was coming too, apparently. Nowhere else to jump, nowhere else to move. There that goes. We didn't get far in this game, yes, but at least we got to play some of it. Unlike the other numbered titles, like 1 and 2, we just barely got to do anything in those games without touching grass. Wish we got to play more, but we did something. That's better than nothing. That's the last game, isn't it? Oh, wait. Melody and Memory. And wait. This is just a rhythm game. You just walk on a flat plane. You don't touch grass at all in this game. Yes! Yes! I can play a Kingdom Hearts game without stopping anymore. At least for this challenge that I've self-imposed on myself. Let's go! We did it. Beat the challenge. This game saved my goddamn life. You're a transmission from God. Isn't that so fitting, though? Ending the video off with a game that you can play forever without touching any grass? That's what it's all about, isn't it? The, the whole point of this video at the end of the day was to show how far I, I, I can't even fake it. I, so that was the video. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> I put a lot of my soul into this video. I know it sounds like a stupid thing to put a lot of effort into, but I just wanted to try out so many new things with this video. I just had so much fun making it. Now, hopefully you guys enjoy it too. This is a style that I hope to revisit in the future. And you know, maybe we can do some other game series as well. Hope to see you guys in the future. And remember, touching grass gives you cooties it gra grass is the new cooties guys don't even get in don't even get near